I'm B, B Rowan of Straw Build, and I've been lucky enough to be working with this stuff, straw and natural materials, for probably nearly 20 years. I've been invited here to Tamera for a really exciting experimental week. My area is natural building, uh, straw bale building, clay plasters, lime renders. I've been working with these for many, many years and have a, still have a great joy in, in working with what's local and what's natural. The work here in the experimental week, as you can see around us, we're literally working with the local soil and local materials to try and replicate what uh, we in Straw Build, together with my associate staff at home, has been doing in Pakistan in the last two years, which is working with local soils to make them flood resilient by testing them with very small amounts of local lime, which is really fantastic. It's very affordable, the environmental footprint is reduced hugely, the cost is reduced by about 70%. Tamara can have their own recipe for their own soils so that every building element in Tamera can be showcased, whether it's foundations, walls, renders, plasters, floor screeds, uh, even paths, pathways, can be uh, stabilised against uh, erosion. OK, Christoph has uh, compiled this list here. We've gone around shopping yesterday, different builders' merchants, and we've gone around the Tamera site, and uh, we've looked at basically all the local natural materials we can use to make these lime stabilised soil mixes. We do the basic field tests to check is there clay content or not in the soil and if there is uh, we do a, like a linear shrinkage test. This is um, 600 millimetres by 40 by 40. We let it dry in the sun and then we measure the shrinkage and you can see the difference here with the two soils. One has a higher clay content than the other, and then we, we use this shrinkage rate to inform us about how much lime we need to put with this particular soil to make the right recipe. This is limestone, and uh, limestone, its chemical formula is calcium carbonate, so there's a lot of calcium. Uh, this is sedimentary rock, and sedimentary means it's squashed in layers millennia ago, and really, if you think about little little shell creatures and skeletons full of calcium. These are really uh, compressed. This is what's formed and we can now quarry this. I think it's one of the most, seventh most common material on the planet. You know, limestone is pretty available wherever we go. It sounds like alchemy to turn this solid stone into something that's going to protect our buildings, you know, but it's, it's not really alchemy because you're not turning one material into another material. You're just turning the same material back into its same chemical formula in a different form on our walls. It's really fantastic and it's a simple process really whereby we burn this and then we add water and then as the water evaporates we start to, if we keep it in the, the right state for what we call carbonation, we can enable the carbon dioxide that's driven off when it's burnt to come back into this material and it transforms it back into calcium carbonate on our walls. And that's one of the beauties of lime, it's not, it's not just that it protects our, our buildings, but it actually increases in strength over time and it increases in beauty, you know. You think about cement, after so many years, it just so ugly and it's so brittle and it will crack anyway with the slightest movement. Lime has so many properties including there's a degree of flexibility so it can work a little bit with the movement of the land without cracking. It's permeable so it allows any kind of moisture to evaporate out very quickly. Cement for instance is a, is a wet material, it does not evaporate in the same way it holds water. Uh, it's forbidden in English heritage in historic Scotland to use cement on any ancient buildings, any historic buildings whatsoever. The damage this can cause to natural materials is phenomenal. It holds the water, traps the water, other materials are, are badly damaged. Lime, however, will breathe that out. Environmentally, it's really great because the CO2 that's kicked out in the burning, as we've mentioned in carbonation, can be drawn back in. So that can effectively be a carbon neutral cycle depending on the fuel used to burn. The environmental footprint of cement is so enormous and the cost is pretty high in a lot of parts of the world. Uh, we're, we're basically relearning how to use lime with natural materials, which is how the world used to work. Lime was the 
binder, the building binder material for, for millennia before, uh, before the advent of cement. So you can take your quick lime and you can slake it with excess water to make lime putty, with minimum water to make dry hydrate. It's very unstable. The way it reverts there is to take water in any form it can. And if it, it can take water from your skin, it can take it from your eye, take it from your throat, from your nasal passages, anywhere, and that's a burn. So this will burn you. Okay, this is the most dangerous form of lime, this quick lime. This is the, the area where you have to really pay attention. The rest of the form of lime, you know, it will dry out, it's an alkali, but this is the only form where it, you have to be really careful. So when we're slaking over here, you'll all need to wear eye protection. Now I'm doing this in what's called excess water, so there's more water than it needs. Yeah. So that's starting to boil, mm -hmm. although it's in plenty of water. You have to make sure that um, they're not protruding out of the water. That's when they can be quite ex dangerous and they can explode. If it's within five minutes, you're good, you've got a reactive quicklime. Anything longer than that, you know, you're just kind of wondering, is it pure, has it been a bit of uh, air slaking gone on, what kind of quality have we got here? The thing about the lime putty here is you must keep it protected underwater. Mm -hmm. you, by the time you get to work with it, it could be useless for our purpose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we need to keep it underwater, and the longer it's kept underwater, on a microscopic level, it almost keeps slaking, so it becomes better and better and better quality. If you break it in half and it's white all the way through, it's a uniform colour all the way through, you know it's been burnt all the way to the core. Sometimes it just might have been burnt on the outside, it might not mm -hmm. have been a really good burning process. This is going to do nothing mm -hmm. in your building. If you don't have a reactive quick lime to start with, don't use it. Don't even use it. Don't use it for painting. It won't do it. It will not behave the way you want it to behave. So we're all working together to try and see, for instance, how these materials, straw, can insulate the biogas digesters to increase their performance, and how we can use the lime-stabilized um, clay as weatherproof renders on top of that insulation. So these are materials that can be used anywhere in the world. Render, outside plaster we call, I call render. So this is the ren potential render mix. These are little um, samples. They're only testing the mechanical properties of the mixtures, like the proportions of the different two different clays uh, with different amounts of, of sand and short chop straw. So this gives us a really good indication of what we can put on, on our fantastic biodigester, straw bale wrap biodigester this morning. All these are the Tamarin soil, which is your local soil, and these are the bought-in Algarve soil, which is a lot sandier. Now I normally really, 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 really love a really straw-rich mix. If you have a really straw-rich mix, you hardly need any sand. Now sand is good because it gives a kind of more robust, strong skeleton. The straw is fantastic because it really stops the shrinkage and you can build out really thick. It's fantastic, you know, it's really, I love it. It's, it's a completely different feel, texture, creature almost than sandy mixes. However, we have an issue here at Tamara. We don't have short chopped straw and we don't have any means mechanically of cutting a lot of short chopped straw quickly. So some of these have got minimum straw in. I wanted to see, could we get away with the, you know, more sandy mixes and less straw, which is not my preferred, but you know, it, they, it, they work very well. Sand also reduces shrinkage and stops cracking, so both sand and straw will, will, will help with that. And the sand just gives us a little bit more robust finish, and you can feel that, the ones with sand have this harder, really much harder finish, and that might be what we want, you know, it depends. Also depends what you've got, you know, like in places in Pakistan, Sand was expensive, straw was readily available. You know, here they have a lot of sand and cutting straw is really difficult, so we adjust. And we've also been working in collaboration with TH using some of these mixes, uh, trying to insulate these IBCs. These are super effective, but uh, in, when they're warm, they're great. When the temperature drops at night, they lose efficiency and then they have to heat up again. So we're insulating this one here with straw bales. It's a really readily available local material in many parts of the world. And then we thought, in parts of the world where it's difficult to get rectangular straw bales, we'll try a different technique, which is just straw and clay. A lot of straw tossed in a clay mix, but this time we added um, uh, the percentage of lime required to stabilize it for the Portuguese very 
uh, rainy season. So we're going to leave them uncovered um, with just the lime stabilised topping. So we're doing two experiments. One is to compare how they perform uh, temperature-wise with the insulation. This insulation, the light clay, light earth insulation up at the grey centre and then uninsulated, painted black. So it would be really interesting to see how they perform, but also to see um, how weatherproof these different, these different renders are. So it's just really fun. We can replicate this in different places around the world. It's a very simple technology, uh, just a few soil tests, a few lime tests, and then some tests bringing those together. Uh, this can all be done pretty well without a laboratory. In due course, we should be able to have a system where we can show a living scenario with minimum environmental impact all based on really that synergy between local materials and refined understanding as to how to work with them.